Hey everyone, welcome to another Adventures of Smiles. Just before I go into this vlog today, I just want to give a shout out and say very much thank you to Michelle and OJ Wrecker for becoming my newest subscribers. It means a lot. I'm trying to build this channel and it's, yeah, one sub at a time. So I hope you're all doing well. And today I got a pretty special location for you guys today. You see behind me a little bit here. I'll just scooch that over a little bit so you can see. I'm in the St. Norbert region of Manitoba and behind me here is a Trappist monastery. Now in 1891 in France, the Bonifay really wanted to make a settlement in North America. So he decided on this region on Lake Salle River to build a monastery. Now to tell a little bit about this, this order and Trappist Monastery, I'll go a little bit into that. They are all about following the order and tenets of St. Benedict. And that is about no idle talk, being wise with your words, hard work, patience, and dis discipline. Now, for a long time here, they, they lived here for about a hundred years. And I'm just gonna walk around to here. It's my first time actually using a, what would this stuff I be called? <laughs> I'm a, <laughs> being a little boomer here, but yeah, this is a uh, extension pole thingy dingy. If I could give you guys a little bit of a laugh at that one. So yeah, I'm definitely learning how to use this. So yeah, in this area, in Manitoba, it's great farming land, and 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 fishing land, and hot summers, cold winters. Great community, and a perfect location. Because the one thing they weren't about is they liked being out in the wilds and not urbanized. So, that's one of the reasons why later on in, in the 1870s they moved the area this Trappist monastery to Holland Manitoba and here I'm just gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the camera around now and we're gonna continue this so yeah they moved there in the 1870s and this became place became abandoned and the in the, the mid 1980s vandals vandals burned the inside of this and it is no longer meant meant to be no oh, it's this trappist monastery is mainly known for nowadays as being haunted Nearly like 100% of people that come in here are having supernatural experiences. So, one of the common ones is seeing, as there are nuns living here, seeing ghosts of nuns in the, walking around in the forest around here. And also, also seeing a man riding on a horse towards them, or the couple of I've heard of so far. And I'm just gonna walk around now, because one of the common ones is people experiencing not being able to breathe. And just, yeah, really oppressive being watched experience when they are are walking around or in one of these rooms and specifically this room a little bit of history of this room this is where sasquatch actually sasquatch family actually lived for a little while and they found bones to this day they don't know what the bones were but some people experienced thought it was human and the blood marks all over the place is super gross and just ripped off limb of limb 
just drank all that blood. Mmm, good stuff. But <laughs> back, back to the back to the monster. Yeah, people really experiencing really repressive and experience walking through here. And I think that had to thing had to do with like I think we don't whoa, whoa. Sorry about that, I almost there. We don't know exactly how this the the mon the leader of this monastery was treating his his nuns and stuff like that, but you know from the past and some of the history you guys can look into that, like the Catholics and Protestant battles what the Catholics did in Scotland of locking people in locking people in in, in small spaces because they're just being claimed of heresy or not following God exactly the way they wanted to. The Catholic faith ordained and not going to the, the Pope or the priest for confession. So yeah, it's probably something was going on along that lines, but but yeah, we're well, just gonna walk over here. And just see how it feels in this room over here. And then I got a kind of special special treat for you guys. I got a I I got an eyewitness to some of the experiences that have happened from walking around being in this area and some of the supernatural experiences. Oh just one second. 1892 and then uh, just wanted to help the guests over there. They're saying this is built in the 1900s, which isn't true, it's built in the late 1800s. But yeah, I'm just gonna head now over to my buddy. And he's gonna share the experiences he had walking around in here. But uh, just before I interview and get to my buddy's Jay Nate's story on what happened here, I just wanna point out, I think this is the weirdest thing uh, this property here behind me we got a Buddhist plaque I guess a prayer prayer temple so yeah super weird I don't get why this exactly was built here because the Punjabi temples and uh, that area of the world other stuff were built like it's just a very strange place for it <laughs> in the middle of the middle of the woods here but yeah if I'm gonna interview I'm gonna get my buddy Jay Nate to come in now <laughs> and uh, yeah if you want to you can hold it too if you want and uh, I'm just gonna get him to share his experience here so yeah yeah so, if you want to go into it yeah so I don't know, over the last uh, few years, I guess, there's been some really weird uh, sightings of like a little ghost girl with no eyes wandering around in this very place. Also, you know, the equivalent to like a little goblin kind of creature, a uh, demon, uh, wandering around as well. That I have uh, uh, family friends of mine and friends that's uh, experienced seeing these, these things, you know, super supernatural. Um, it just, yeah, this place just gives you the, the creeps, you know, the spooks, whatever you want to say. Um, but yeah, you know, been around. I've, I've lived in this area uh, a long time now and just, just, you know, just walking around this place just gives you the creeps. So, yeah. Right on. Right on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'm not the big, fa the biggest fan of this algorithm thing going on, or like so many other YouTubers. But it helps out so much if you hit that like button, because else the joy and the light and the enjoyment, the laughter, the history you're getting from these vlogs. I want more people to experience it because I love the area I live. I love these stories, and I want to get more people out there. And I also do notice that from looking at the algorithm, about 40% of my viewers are not subs. So yeah, you guys, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button. 
again with all the algorithm stuff I was just talking about it helps out so much because yeah I want to get this content out there so remember create your own adventure out there there's so much experience out there get out there experience adventures no matter where you are learn your history learn to craft new things if you like fishing there's, there's hooks you can craft drawing art yeah get out there create your own adventure and love you all stay safe and peace out